coming up. Don't like competing at anything. But I remember the day, it was Mother's Day. We went to Pier 1 in Montego Bay. Yes. I remember I was the last person to audition because I was the last person to show up. Wow. And I remember going through that process. The song I, I auditioned with, with was Dance With Somebody by Whitney Houston because again, she's played such a big role in my life. So they like pulled it. me to the corner. One put his gun in my mouth. Mm, in your mouth? In my mouth. And I remember when the rape was going to happen. The ra rape? Yes, this one. I knew he was going to do it. He is the only one who didn't wear a mask. Hi everyone, this week on The Trailblazers, we have the riveting story of Lenya Wilkes. Lenya was first introduced to the Jamaican musical scene on Rising Stars. Well, Lenya recently resurfaced on the musical scene, appearing in Canada's Got Talent and wowing the judges. Tune into part one of this part two interview. Special thanks to all our current partners and sponsors. If you are interested in sponsoring or partnering with the Trailblazers, send an email to the Trailblazers247 at gmail.com. Some of our most prominent producers mm -hmm. in the industry tell Tony that he could not bust a female artist because wow. your feeling is one thing. Feeling publicly is, is, a, is a very hard thing. My father always said he was growing a prime minister. Had I said I was all in my mouth, the lies were going, and I put, I sat and I saw women on the TV just lying bluntly, just just like that. At least all media survey, when they look at the name Ron Mushet, zero, what? zero, zero. And then they send back to say that they apologize. The lady up there never put in the number. No. Seriously? Um, in terms then, of help, help or like, I was cleaning. Yeah, my mom was a, yeah, my mom was a helper back then and stuff. To be honest, I was just excited. You know, to play for us I did it and I made my move into entrepreneurship at 40. What, you know, last comments would you want to share with you? You have your core values, you do the right things, it'll fall in place with you. So Lenya is no stranger to many Jamaicans having made her, should I call it her debut, or known to a lot of Jamaicans when she was on Rising Stars as a teenager. And of course, since then, she has evolved. She's been through so much, but she is thriving. We saw her recently on Canada's Got Talent, and it is a pleasure to have her on the Trailblazers. Joining us from Canada. Yes, thank you for having me, Tamara. It's, it's been a journey. Um, I've been away from Jamaica for so long, and I'm just happy to be back in this space where I can connect with my people and have conversations on a variety of topics. It's going to be an interesting conversation. I am looking forward to it. So let's jump right into it, Lenya, because as I mentioned in my little preamble just now, you started out, well, we, I guess you, you can tell us from when you started singing, but we came to know you in terms of the public when you were on that competition, Rising Stars, and you were just a teenager at the time. So... Tell us about your journey in terms of your singing career. Was it always something you were doing from your little kid? Absolutely. So uh, my, my youngest memory is I was six and my grandma asked me what I wanted to do when I got older and I said I wanted to sing like Whitney Houston. Ah. And so music has always been a part of me as well, always played that big role in my life journey and any decisions that I made. But in all honesty, I didn't start taking music seriously until I uh, started Charlie Mount High School and I joined their music group. And through that, you know, we entered a lot of JCDC music festivals. I entered a children, children gospel festival by JCDC and I came second that year. And then my last year of high school, you know, Rising Stars popped up and I was forced to join because I'm going to tell you this straight up. I do not like competitions. Like competitions for me, for some reason, I don't have luck in competitions. No matter how talented I think I am, I can never win. <laughs> so I don't like competing at anything. But I remember the day, it was Mother's Day. We went to Pier 1 in Montego Bay. Yes. I remember I was the last person to audition because I was the last person to show up. Wow. And I remember going through that process. The song I, I auditioned with, with was Dance With Somebody by Whitney Houston because, again, she's played such a big role in my life. Legend. I remember just feeling super nervous. 
Um, I peed maybe a hundred times that day because, you know, you watch everybody come in and, and go in and come out and all the different layers of emotions. And you're like hoping that you go in and get the better response of the two. And um, I remember just going in front of Anthony and, and Nadine and Clive and giving it everything that I had. And the reception was so wonderful. Yes. Um, I, I can remember the whole journey. I know that we left Pier 1 and we went to some hotel and we did the other part of the video in, but that was starting of Lenya, introducing Lenya to the Jamaica, um, or to Jamaica public in a whole. Um, and then going through the Rising Star process, through that process, you know, I was able to make very, very long-term relationships and connections. Like Romain and I are still close. Oh, Jody nice. and I are still close and, you know, and you're talking about uh, Romain Virgo and Jodian Pantry. Yes, I'm talking wow. about the big and famous Romain Virgo and Jodian Pantry. And um, we still remain close. And But it, being through that process, I learned so much about who I was as a musician. Um, Sharon Shota supported us thoroughly. We were protected. We were guided. Um, we were nurtured. Um, and then just after Rising Star is going through that elimination process, and crying on live TV, because that seems to be my nature. <laughs> it's just you as a person. Yeah. Oh, you're on TV, Lenny, you're crying. What is your problem? <laughs> I'm filled with so much emotions. I think that's my biggest thing. Um, but going through that process, it, it was a warm feeling. I, I'm grateful for the experience. You know, Digital Rising Stars took me to Curacao for the first time. You know, our group was the only group to travel outside of Jamaica. Wow. And so it's a journey that I hold very dear to me. Indeed, indeed. All right, so I love that you mentioned that in terms of your your genesis or your start um, in the music industry here in Jamaica. So I understand that after Rising Stars, because a lot of people were pretty upset when you got eliminated on the show. I mean, you got into the top five, I think. You finished fourth. I came fourth, yeah. Yes. So you are a big, big singer. Like, you can sing, girl. And I, I mean, I know I'm definitely going to want you to drop a tune during the course of this interview. But yes, so you can really sing. So some persons were upset when you got eliminated. But all things work together for good because uh, the noted legendary singer, Barry Hammond, you, I understand, after Rising Stars, you got to work with him. To be honest, Barry called, his team called the same night I got eliminated. So oh. after I finished crying on stage and I got backstage, Jerome um, from, I can't remember, Headline Entertainment. It, Jerome Hamilton. Yes. My manager. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Big up Jerome. Big up Jerome. <laughs> yeah, he um was backstage and he's like, Lenny, we got a call. Harmony House wants you to join their camp. And I'm like, really? And I remember there was another group that wanted me to join their camp. And they're like, who do you want to choose? And I'm like, well, of course, it's going to be Barry Hammond. Who doesn't want to work with Barry Hammond? Um, so I remember going through that process and I remember going to Harmony House. It was in October. That's one good thing about me. I don't forget dates. Yes. <laughs> it was in October and I was, you know, just turning 18 and I was so excited and walking through Harmony House studio and meeting Barry for the first time and, you know, having the experience to work with him. You know, I was in studio with him. Um, I toured the world with him for four years. Wow. I opened shows for him. I'm, I joined him on stage um, for many on many occasions. It was an experience. I was the only teenager touring the world with a group of seasoned um, musicians. You know, Barris has been in the industry for so long. His band is one of the most renowned and most seasoned reggae band you can possibly think about. So having that experience is, it's a lifetime journey. I know many artists dream of an opportunity like that. So I take every opportunity and I'm grateful for them. Mm -hmm. I learned so much from him as an artist, his lyric, lyrical style, you know, his, his musical experience, his, his way of owning a stage, you know, Beres is everything. Anytime we hear about Beres, everybody's going to that show, you know, so it's it's been a wonderful experience but it never ended for me after I was in start it's just that I wasn't in the Jamaica eye and I think that was one of my downfalls I would say 
Okay. But it's not a downfall. It's part of the journey. Because, I mean, you were super, super young at the time. Still a teenager. You're still young. But, I mean, it's a life lesson. And one of the things I like having started out in the industry early myself in terms of media is that it's good when we can experience certain things at a very early age because it's part of your life story and it builds you up and strengthens you for the next part of your journey, right? I agree. It, 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 it has strengthened me. Um, I do have many regrets, many regrets in how I navigated that opportunity and the experience. But, you know, I, I, I live my life saying you can't be regretful because every step is what led you to where you are today you know maybe I, if i've done things differently i probably wouldn't have gone to school and gotten a degree right so I, i'm learning to be grateful for each journey and what lesson that journey taught me and so it's all i will say is that i was grateful for the time that i had with harmony house that's awesome that is awesome all right so a topic which you have shared and we're going to touch on that um, a bit deeper in terms of, you know, a part of or being a part of uh, Canada's Got Talent recently and how you you resurfaced pretty much on in the Jamaican eye um, and on the musical scene again. But in that uh, audition, you mentioned about something which happened when you branched out on your own and you were there and you're still here in Jamaica. So if you would like, could you share with us what actually happened or as much as you feel comfortable to share? Absolutely. So, you know, it was in 2011, October 2011. Um, I had just came back from tour at Harmony House. It was, I was home for maybe two weeks. I still had my suitcase back. So nothing, you know, you just come home from a very, very long um, journey and you're still settling into home. And I remember being at my parents' house and my my nephew was there, he was about one at the time, and I was laying in my parents' bed with my nephew watching TV, and I remember seeing my mom come to the room, but she had this smile on her face, and this man was behind her, but because she had a smile on her face, I didn't, I didn't grasp at what, what was happening, but I think she was smiling because she didn't want me to panic, right, and so I remember him walking remember them walking towards me and then finally when they got closer in the room I realized that he had his gun in her back yes and so they pulled us and they're like they put us in my room and they wanted to tie us up and I said well you can't tie me up because I have a one-year-old baby here with me you can't tie me up yeah and, and so they were understanding and they didn't tie us up because what what, what was I going to do with a one-year-old child yes so they started going around the house and, you know, asking where the gold is, where the money is, where the gun is. And I'm like, we don't have weapons in this house. And who do you think keeps money in a house? You know, like, I don't yeah. get what you're saying. And, you know, two was wearing masks, one wasn't. And um, he's like, we were told that you have money over here. And we were told that you have firearms here and you know that was a conversation and they were dragging us from room to room asking me to show them when the gun is um they stayed there for five and a half hours smear digging up the house five and a half hours they came in after two and they didn't leave till after seven wow yeah. five and a half hours they asked my mom to cook they made my mom cook oh what yes they made my mom cook and then they made her share the food in one plate and then they made her taste it just to ensure that she didn't poison it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yep, they ate out of one plate, out of one fork. Um, yes, that was, it was like so planned out. They told us that they were um, in the backyard because we have like a hillside land. Mm -hmm. They were out there camping for three days. What? Three days. Three days. Three days. They were soaking wet when they came in. They were out there camping for three days. But it's funny because we have a lot of dogs and our dogs started to die. But we couldn't figure out what it was. They were poisoning them. Oh, <laughs> like, my gosh. It was like this long process. It was something that was meticulously planned out. Like, they had information. They knew I was home. They knew all of these things. And so they were just waiting for the right opportunity to come in. And so they got in because my mom went out to get pepper off her tree. Yeah. And that's what so I remember being there and... I remember when my dad came home from work, they took my mom and they told her, you need to go out there and greet him like you normally do every day. And if you let him know that we're in here, we're going to shoot her. 
So they pulled me to the corner. One put his gun in my mouth. Mm, in your mouth? In my mouth. And while his gun was in my mouth, <clears throat> one was feeling me up. Wow. Yeah. Assaulting you, sexually assaulting yep. you. Yep. Wow. Sexually assaulting me, touching all over my body. And um, in that moment, I said to myself, this isn't just going to be the end of it. Um, after my dad got in, they searched him. They tied him up. Um, they still searched in the halls, wanting to know where things are. They took what they could. They took clothes. They took shoes. They took whatever money we have. At one point, they were like, we're going to take you to the ATM. You're going to drive to the ATM. And I said, if I go on the road, I'm going to drive this car over a cliff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I said that to him. Mm-hmm. And so they changed that story. And I remember when the rape was going to happen. The ra- rape? Yes. This one... I knew he was going to do it. He is the only one who didn't wear a mask. And he came to me and he said to me, you're going to have to take one for the family. Wow. That is what he said to me. And I said, what do you mean? He's like, come, let me take you to your parents' room for you to show me where the goal is. And so he dragged me and took me up to my parents' room and closed the door. And that's when it happened. And I think right through the whole moment, I was so lifeless. I, I was just waiting for it to just be done. And I remember when it was done, he was like, you should go pee. Because, you know, they're so dumb. Yeah. <laughs> it removes whatever mm-hmm. DNA and whatever. Thing. You should go pee. And I remember going to pee. And I remember him watching me do everything that I was doing. And then took me back into the living room like nothing never happened. And I remember my mom looking at me. And I think she knew in that moment what yeah. happened. Um. And then they did what they needed to do. And then at 7.30, I remember watching a car light pass. And then they were like, okay, we're going to go. So that was their ride. So they went into the back and they went out and they got their ride. And I remember after they left, immediately calling the police. And to be honest, that was like pointless because they did nothing. You know, they came in and they did the finger dusting. Um, I remember rushing to Kingston to the rape unit and they take in my underwear and doing whatever they needed to do. But at the end of the day, nothing came out of it, Tamira. Um, and the, the most traumatic part for me was having to do the STD and the HIV AIDS tests yeah. for every six months after that happened. Wow. Just sure that nothing was passed on to me because, yeah, he didn't use any protection. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. No protection was used. And, you know, just after that... I remember the star writing about it and, but they didn't put my name and the only, the, my thing was the only thing left for them to do was to put my name. It was prominent digital rising star contestant from Rep Your Turn St. Catherine family robbed and, and raped. Wow. <laughs> and I was like, you might as well have put my name. Because yeah. Because they all know that's you from exactly. Yes. And I just remember the article And I remember my family getting all of these calls because I had no phone. They took all of those things, right? Had no phones and just having to go through that process. And the worst part was hearing all the horrible things that people had to say. The horrible things. People said I was crippled because they did me in my rear. Yeah. And I can't walk anymore. You know, yeah. Yeah. You know, the fact that people would say, I deserved it because I act like my better than people. Like, hearing those <laughs> negative things um, was, for me, the most disheartening part of it. Because how can you say somebody deserves something? Exactly. Like you know, and it was just so heartless. And for me, it's hard to, I, I can't even want to imagine saying that as a reflection of Jamaican people, because that's not the reflection of Jamaican people. But in every situation, you always have those naysayers and negative people who just, they thrive of people's downfall or people's um, um, situations. And it, it, for me, it was so hard. I was very embarrassed. I was embarrassed because a part of me felt like it was my fault, you know? Wow. I came home. I was a target, you know, I was what they wanted. They heard that I came home with money and would just come home from tour. She must have money, you know, the good, good US dollars. So it was all of those things. Um, But I'm grateful that I have life. My nephew is 13 
and has no memory of this situation. Wow. None. And it's funny because I was talking to my sister-in-law two days ago and she said, Trajan said to her, Until, did Auntie Lenya get sexually assaulted? He didn't know. But then he wow. watched the Canada's Got Talent video and that's when he found, found out. Yes. And she's like, you're going to have to talk to your nephew about what happened. Wow. <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> But, wow. you know, I had wonderful support. My family is amazing. You know, we went through that, through that trauma together. We cried together. Um, I remember for about two months or three months after the situation, I had to stay away from family because every time they would look at me, everybody would just start crying. And, you know, all of that emotion, and it's that real constant reminder. And um, I even stepped away from music. I think that was my journey, beginning of deciding that I just, I couldn't function anymore because I, I think a part of it is what I lost me. I didn't know who I was. Yes, yes. And I mean, to go through such an ordeal, Lenya, to experience such a traumatic situation that in and of itself, you know, is very devastating. And so anybody could understand why you stepped away and why you reacted that way because I mean that is that is mind blowing that something like that happened and they indicated that you were the target did they get anything or or what the only thing they got was what was in the house they took TVs they took the clothes they took the laptops whatever money was in the house mm -hmm. so at the end of the day they didn't they didn't get major things because yeah. they came on foot like what are you gonna take on foot you know yeah. So then what, is, and it's so weird because you're like, why did you even have to go so far to do something like that? Exactly. It was like disrupting who I was. And it's funny because I remember one of them saying to me, boy, let me, if you didn't say your house, more wouldn't come. Okay, so you reach and see them, then don't do anything. No, eh, him say my great film daughter. <laughs> that's, that, that's literally what he said to me. He said, what? Daughter, for him daughter, a better life. And I'm like, so robbing people is your way of taking care of your life. And don't get me wrong, I know that the system in Jamaica is, is, is you know, doing injustice to you. Mm -hmm. We need to be doing more work. But this is not the way. Robbing other people and the hard work that they put in to have what they have yeah. is not the right way. That is not the way to go about things. Mm -hmm. um, system, systematic structures need to happen. But it was just hearing him say those words was yes. very wow i'm really sorry that you had to go through that i honestly am i i did not even realize the extent of all that happened during that ordeal like it was at uh, three days and that end yeah. thing that's 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 really devastating so i can understand why you stepped back so it was shortly after you decided to to migrate no i had so many things happen after that you know it was in 2011 2011 um in about the end of 2012 i had met um somebody who's interested in investing in my music mm -hmm. and through them i ended up leaving harmony halls and working with them and i released my album through them in 2013 it was a self-titled album mm -hmm. um and then it just for me you know so much money went into the album but it just never got where I wanted it to get. I had a wonderful collaboration with Tara Riley. Um, I had very big names. Dean Fraser produced a couple of the songs on the album. And for me, it was just not getting to where I wanted it to be. And in 2016, in 2015, I decided, okay, I'm gonna take a break. And I went to see my brother and his family. They were living in Brandon, Manitoba. And I remember being there and I saw the university and I'm like, you know what? That is what I'm going to do. So I made the full move in 2016. So it took a couple of years for me to get there. But, you know, it took a couple of years of horrible relationships and some super bad decisions and falling flat on my face and um, not progressing, living in my parents' house, not going anywhere, not doing anything. Um, it took years of that for me to say, this is not who you are. This was not the plan you had for your future. What do we need to do to get you back on a proper track? Um, but it was part of the downfall. You know, I was, I was up there. And yeah. just in that moment, it took me all the way down here. And I'm, 
I don't know. I can't even explain it. Yeah, but the beauty of it, when you fall flat and you're down, the only way to go is back up. That is so true. Back up. And the, the talent that you have, the gifting that you have, the destiny that God has for you, trust me, is greater than... Perhaps it is said that very often the people who have the greatest destinies go through the hardest battles. I ask myself that sometimes I'm like, is this, this is, is this a part of my journey? Because, you know, why is my journey so rough? Like, I'm not even telling you half of the crap. Because, you know, <laughs> for me, it's like, no, I don't need people to hear that. <laughs> you know, because I've made so much bad decisions. I've listened to so many wrong voices telling me to be who I'm not, just telling me to do what I'm not. And, you know, it's, it's unfortunate that I had to go through all of that roughness yes. to figure out who I am, to figure out what is it that I want out of life. Um, but it, it made me who I am. So I have to take it, I have to take the good out of all of that situation and, and, and run with that and yes. leave the rest behind. Indeed. And I mean, we all have made bad decisions, trust me. So I don't, there's nobody out there who's perfect, even if they give the illusion of it. So we all have made bad decisions, as you mentioned. It's just now looking at the lessons and moving forward. And beauty of it is you're still young enough. And even if you were much older, you could bounce back, but you're still young enough, you can bounce back. And that's what you've been doing, which brings me to Canada's Got Talent. When I saw the clip, um, on, I think, I don't remember which uh, local newspaper had it, but they had it on their social media pages and they were, they wrote about it and then they had the clip of you performing for the audition on Canada's Got Talent recently. And I was like, yeah, yeah. oh my God. And then when you started sharing in front of the, those well-known judges, Howie and all of them, and you started singing and I, I cried, I like tears came to my eyes. And then, you know, even the comment section, everybody was so supportive. I said, I remember one lady said, young lady, nothing happens before it's time and God works on all things for good. And I was like, wow. I was like, it, to me, it was encouraging as well because it shows that even when you fall, even when you feel like things have gone awry, your destiny will always come after you. It certainly will. Tune in next week to part two and the finale to learn more about Lenya's journey in Canada's Got Talent. What's next for her and how she continues to heal and use her voice to inspire. Hi everyone, I am Tamar McHale, television and radio presenter, producer, communication specialist, and of course, producer and host of the Trailblazer series. I'm inviting you, yes, you, to join the family. All you have to do is just click that subscribe button right below. Yes, you see it. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you're alerted as to when we have new episodes, which is generally weekly. And then join the family for our weekly inspiring episodes that will not only lift your spirits, but give you the tools, the keys, and the strategies that you need so that you can walk in your purpose and blaze your trail.